Hello and welcome to Dark Horse Comics at WonderCon. We are so excited to meet you in your homes today, even though we can't see you in person. Um, I think we're all getting kind of used to this, though. Uh, today, I'm joined with some creators from the Unique Universe uh, with Unique Studios. Dark Horse just recently announced that we have a new partnership with them, and we're so excited to get more of uh, more people aware of their already fantastic material and introduce more of it to you all. Um, I'm going to have all our creators introduce themselves and then I'm going to have Roy here uh, talk a little bit about what the Unique Studios universe is. Uh, Roy, do you want to go ahead and say hello first? Sure. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Roy Okupe. I am the CEO um, of Unique Studios, uh, also the creative director and writer on the Unique Graphic Novels. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to, to be here today to talk about comics. I'm um, really grateful for Dark Horse for um, their support in this partnership, uh, the partnership on this um, project, on this program. And uh, we have a lot of amazing things to, to bring to you guys that we're going to be talking about in a second. So I'll let, uh, I'll let Morby go and introduce himself next. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good evening uh, or good day. Depending on where you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a Jason Moby, um, also known as Moby. Uh, I work primarily as the color artist for the graphic novels. And um, yeah, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be able to um, be a part of this. So yeah, it's, it's nice to see everyone. It's nice to be here. So coming, the maestro. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, how's your day going? My name is Akimboye Sukomi. I am um, the artist on. Uh, let's say most of uh, the unique books. I'm not the only artist, definitely. But I've been with um, Roy from literally the beginning, from the first book. And um, I'm happy that we got this far. And um, we're working with Dark Horse, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Um, yeah, so um, uh, Kate, um, like you said, you know, I wanted to just quickly give an overview of um, Unique Studios. So basically for us, um, you know, our mission is to empower African creatives and African storytelling, um, whether that's through comics, animation, TV, film, whatever the case may be. Um, and one of the things that, like I said, we're most proud of is, is getting to this point where, you know, we're able to have this partnership with Dark Horse to, to bring to more people all over the world these characters. Um, all our stories are inspired by African history, culture, and mythology, but these stories are created for everyone. These are global stories with characters that are compelling that anybody um, you know, can, can see themselves in. And that's what we pride ourselves on is, is um, you know, just creating characters that are compelling and relatable who happen to be African. Um, and that's what I feel like separates us from a lot of people and um, gives us, quote unquote, a unique <laughs> point of view in the, um, sorry, I had to do that. A unique point of view in, in, um, in the entertainment industry, um, you know, but I also want to shout out the artist's that are not here today that have been part of us in one way or the other. Ayodele Elegba, Chima Kalu, Etubi Onicheu, um, Tarela Pablo, Rafael, um, Kazim, and, and of course, Godwin Akban, who has done most of the covers, um, you know, for all the book as well. One of the things that we, you know, I've always, you know, been very proud of is when I started doing comics, I wanted to make sure that I, I let people understand that when it comes to talent, you know, Africa can stand with the world and uh, you get to see that in, in, in each page of our books that um, from the writing to the coloring to the lettering, um, that we do have something to say in, in this industry and we have more to bring to the table in the future with the unique books. Great, yeah. Wow, that was a perfect introduction. It's like you've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of wanted to ask all of you, uh, how did you guys sort of start, be get interested in comics in the first place? So come you want to go first? Okay, um, comic books. I, I think I, I've always loved comic books. My first um, comprehensive drawing, um, I jumped from Stickman to drawing Voltron. You know, <laughs> from stick figures, I just went straight to draw. I drew my own lion and I was, I was blown away like, you know, but formally I started in um, 2003. Nice. Uh, before wow. then I was working for a newspaper cartoonist. Um, and then 2003, I got my first comic book job. 
uh, which literally paid an amount I cannot say now, but I can probably <laughs> never say it. But I was having way too much fun. And um, I never looked back ever since. Awesome. Morby. Yeah, so I'm I'm fairly I'm fairly newer to I mean I'm fairly younger than um, Sukomi and uh, Mr. Ray. So well they'll say that their influences are probably Voltron. My influence is um what's it called? This comic book, this soccer comic book that super was popular strikers? in Nigeria. Yeah, super, super strikers. Striker. Like yeah, super strikers. So yeah, I mean uh, before then I've been watching animations and all, but like my very first contact with a comic book. I mean, was Super Striker. So for the, for me then, it was more about um, what blew my mind was the fact that we could capture what was done in animation on paper. Yeah, like because animation wasn't so easy to come by, and um, you know, in fifteen minutes it's gone. But with a book, you know, it's with you. You know, all um, anytime you want to read it. So um, I started working professionally um, twenty fifteen. 2015 was when I started working professionally. So um, since then, it's just been getting better and better. I, I, I'm not as um, old. Uh, how do I say it now? I, I, Stop I, calling so me. Just Stop recently. calling me old. You can, you can say no, old. No, no, no. I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is um, my, my involvement with Unique is, is fairly recent. I mean, it's not. it's just barely two years, just about two years. So... Um, I mean, I'm glad to, you know, come to continue the legacy that even the color is before me and I've, I've started and, um, it's, it's a great, it's, it's a great privilege to work with someone as, as skilled as, uh, Mr. Sukomi. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, as the old, the old man on this panel, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for me, actually, I got into comics by accident. Honestly, uh, I, I got into comics cause I was too broke to do animation. Um, you know, as funny, <laughs> as funny as that sound, it ended up being one of the best things that happened to me because like Morby said, this medium is just amazing. Um, you know, there's so much you get to do, um, you know, through the pages of a comic book, um, and just again, it's it's a I think it's a very personal medium. Like when you have a reader going through a comic book, and it's just yeah. something that um, you appreciate more as you flip to, through page by page. And I, I fell in love with the medium when I realized how much flexibility and how much liberation that I could get. It's like I could just wake up, write, you know, find people as talented as as these two or more people, partner with them, and be able to tell my own stories and literally just beam it out. Um, to the world, um, as opposed to animation, where there's so much that has to go right for you before you can even get a chance to to tell your stories. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been reading comics since I was a kid. I just, again, animation was my first love. Um, but now, like comic books, you know, I wouldn't say it's my first love, but it's, it's. Um, I hate to use this word, but I guess mistress to animation, <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm telling very terrible jokes today. I don't know why. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, I, I love, I love, I love the medium so much, um, and it, and it's something that I, I plan to be a part of for a very, very long time. Just because, like I said, it's it's just that place that you can really get to tell um, so many fantastic stories. Yeah, yeah, um, and then so I guess I know how you guys got into comics, but specifically, how did you become involved with the unique universe? Yeah, I mean, I think I I'll, I'll, I can go on that one, like. You know, yeah. when I when I first started um, Unique Studios, and I knew I wanted to to do comics, I I, um, I reached out to you know someone called Ayodele Legba. Ayodele Legba is one of the biggest names in in Nigerian or even African comics. He's the one that runs the you know the annual Lagos Comic Con, which I believe um, right. had the you know 2019 was like either the eighth year or or ninth. I can't remember. Wow. Um, but um, yeah, Ayodele is very well respected in the industry. And I went to him and I said, look, um, I want to do comic books, but I want to keep the authenticity of the stories that I'm trying to tell, because I want to tell African stories. And I want to make sure that uh, no, not only do I keep the authenticity, but I want to involve African people, people that are on the continent to be able to produce this content, because I feel like they have a lot to bring to the table when it comes to mainstream, um, you know, comics, um, you know, as well. And, and Adele Eleba introduced me um, to, to Sukomi. Um, and after two years of, of fighting, like I was saying <laughs> uh, before the panel, like we fought a lot in our first two years, but it's because we are very passionate about the, the craft. And Sukomi is a yeah. master of, of, of his craft, um, you know. So I, I got to learn 
honestly, and I've never said this to you, I got to learn a lot from him about making comics because that was my first writing experience in comics. And he had been drawing comics for a while before that. And um, he was someone that um, was very, very lenient with me early on with my um, some of my terrible writing mistakes <laughs> and <laughs> extremely <laughs> ridiculous paneling. Um, like at some point, I think I started putting 12, 12, 12 panels on one page and he would just come back to me. And wow. Like, what are you doing? Like, honestly. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, that's, that, that's how I got to, to, to know Sukomi. But Morby is somebody that um, in, you know, in 2016, I started to notice some of the stuff that, that he was doing. And I always wanted to work with him because when it comes to like mood lighting, like, you know, he's one of the best at doing that in, in comics. And I was just very fascinated about, about the how. God hand. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> the, the God the God hand, uh, you know. And that that, that 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 was my first introduction to his work. And I was like, look, I want to really I want to work with this guy, um, you know, you know, one day. And then I, I believe 2019 was the first time that I reached out to him and I said, look, I want you. What is it? What is it going to take for you to to be on the book? And he was very gracious to be able to say, look, you know, I've always respected you and what you're doing, and yeah, let's let's work together. So. That I guess is the story. guys. Did I did I miss anything else? You know, I know I can I can talk all all day long. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. We covered all the basics. Okay, yeah, that, that's basically the, the story of how we we all met. Nice, perfect. Um, and then I guess for each of you, what advice do you have for young creators who are kind of looking to start comics? So call me as, as the second mm. oldest oldest guy. <laughs> as, as more people say. Yeah, we'll, we'll go again with the old then. I'm, I'm not old. You know, I'm just well yep. aged. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, advice I'll, I'll have for young creators who want to break into the comic book industry. First thing I would say is discipline. Um, as much as everybody wants to draw amazing art, they want to put out amazing stuff. But you need to understand that you need to be able to do this both on your good days and your bad days. That's you know, so and the discipline is something that maybe a lot of young creators lack. They just want to draw something cool. But then there are times when you can't draw something cool. Like, for instance, when Roy decides to put 200 people into one panel. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then yeah. thankfully I don't have any hair to pull out. You know, I do a little dance in my office. I scream a little. Then I sit down. I say, you can walk through this. You know, so oh yeah, so you have to be able to um, deliver the same quality consistently. So discipline is probably the biggest advice I would give any young creator. Be disciplined. And to be honest, he's not exaggerating. There's times where I've literally <laughs> said like a crowd of about hundred to two hundred people. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. Uh, but yeah, Morby, Morby, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, yeah. Since um, the old guy has started on his serious <laughs> notes. Oh, I'm gonna get you for that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll I'll just say um, you know patience because um, I mean, um, especially the visual arts, um, it it takes it takes a while to get really good. I mean, it takes it really takes a while. I've I really don't know any shortcuts. So I mean, while um, you're being disciplined and um, showing up to your practice table. Um, every day. I mean, I think patience is another important ingredient. So, you know, just um, trust the process and be patient at it. And eventually, um, good things will come out of it. I mean, that's, that's basically it. It's what has worked for me. So I, I feel like it's, it's something that could work for anybody. And uh, Moby is talking from some painful experience. Like sometimes I have like 100 corrections for him. And I'm yeah, sure, sure sometimes <laughs> he's looking at me like, I, 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 I think, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Those first two years, because, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, in every time we make corrections, the page just gets better. I mean, yeah, I'm having that's two, true. two more experienced eyes looking at it and the page or the cover gets better. And it's like, the first version just looks like, you know, crap compared to what we've worked on. So it's it's something that I I, I really appreciate. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Morbi and Sukomi have have said one of the I believe the two most you know crucial things when it comes to any type of creative yeah. endeavor, whether that's comics, you know, or you know, whether you're doing animation, video games, yeah. like discipline, you know, is is something that that is key and and being patient. Um, I I would say humility 
is for me personally the number one thing. Um, you have to be humble enough to know that I don't know everything. You have to be humble enough to know that I can learn from other people. You have to be humble enough to know that you're not always going to be right. And even though um, you are the one that is um, either leading a project or, or giving instruction or writing a script, you don't know everything, right? You know, and you don't, um, you can't, you can't, you can't always come from that, come that, from that perspective. So humility, I think, is, is extremely important, um, and it's something that I feel like anybody that is starting out absolutely must have. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I guess kind of from there. So obviously, the determination, the patience, the humility to get stuff done um, is something that everyone who needs to go into comics either has to have already or learns, uh, learns very quickly. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of more intricate sort of, I guess, specifics on process that a lot of people don't really think about before they get started yeah. in comics. Like if they're drawing on your own, you know, there's, yeah. there's only so much you have to deal with. But um, comics are such a collaborative process. Um, so I guess kind of from there, like uh, Sukami, like, do you prefer when you get scripts from Roy that are like really detailed or do you kind of like to have a little bit more room to decide what you do yourself? Um, I actually like it when he gives me detailed scripts, but det <laughs> <laughs> detailed, but um, with the liberty um, to make adjustments. So, cause I, I like, I like him to put everything out, you know, get us visually loud as possible you know let him go crazy with it then i can say okay uh, but, but what he usually does is he will stipulate what absolutely has to show up on the page nice and then he's going to put a lot of his ideas what he is we could do this we could do that and i understand their suggestions so i get to work with exactly what he needs and then i get to put my own take on it so i like a detailed script because i like to get the mind of the writer Nice, nice. And then Morby, when things hit your desk, sort of what is what is your process when you start coloring a page? Do you have a lot of notes beforehand? Do you know sort of a color palette that you pick for a book? How much of that is is your individual choice while you're coloring? Oh yeah. Um, well, there are some things that, that aren't like my individual choices. I, I need to follow the script in terms of oh, um, this is a day scene, this is a night scene, and there's some undertones I need to pick up like, oh, this, this scene has um, a serious conversation or it's an uplifting vibe, you know, like uh, I remember towards the end of, end of uh, Malaika 4. Um, don't spoil after it. The, the don't, don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. There were, there were a series of intense scenes, so I needed to, you know, uh, pick that up from the, from the, from the script. And um, yeah, so in terms of process, that then, then at the end of every page, because I used to make this mistake before, um, at the end of this, every page, I, I have a checklist that I have to check that. Um, is this person's logo, you know, have you, have you put this person's logo on, on him or her? Um, you know, things like, just basically some, some things that mark each character. So for each page, I have to check if I've um, um, crossed that list because I made some mistakes. Um, <laughs> I had issues about that before. So yeah, so that's basically the process. It's, it all starts from the scripts, really. It all starts from the scripts, yeah. Good. That uh, that makes a lot of sense. And then Roy, have you sort of over time have you developed sort of a, a way that you like to set up your scripts, or did it, you know, have how much has it changed from when you first started writing scripts to now? Do you add a lot more detail? Have you changed the way you work with people? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty much stayed the same, but I wanted to say something to, to what both of them had said, like, yeah. you know, Susukomi, um, you know, he brought up a point about being able to bring himself into the um, the world of these characters. And to me, that's very important. I think collabor uh, being collaborative is very key um, because again, you don't know everything, right? So that I always, in I intentionally, when I write, especially for people that are gonna do pencils and inks, I always, say look this absolutely story-wise you have to do this and it's even more crucial for me because we're doing a connected universe so sometimes an artist might not know that something that's happening here is connected to a book that comes you know four years later whatever the case may be so sometimes i'll say this absolutely has to happen and i would either highlight those or you know 
put it in red sometimes because like this cannot, you can't make a mistake here. But more often than not, I would say, hey, this is here, this is what I'm thinking. Um, but if you feel like, um, you know, going crazy or changing it, uh, just let me know. And I'm fine with that. Uh, but I, again, Sukomi has spoiled me, spoiled me because we've worked for so long now mm -hmm. that um, <laughs> when I, sometimes like I write in shorthand for him, I can't necessarily even show other people the scripts that I show him because there's <laughs> a lot of shorthand. And sometimes, and you know, he, he's very humble. He won't say this. He's also a martial artist. So when it comes to fighting, <laughs> I would hey. just say, yeah, I would literally just say, <laughs> All right, I'm I'm too tired to write this fight scene. <laughs> These two people fight. These are the styles of fighting. One knows kung fu. One is you know you know using um, capoeira. This is the person that wins in the middle. This is what should happen. This is where the fight changes, and then he just fills in the blanks. But there are sometimes like where there are fight scenes that are so story centric that I have to actually choreograph and say this and this and this happens. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I try to always give liberty because I, I feel like the books, not that I feel, I know that the books won't be as good as they are if yeah. Sukomi and Morby and the rest of the people that I've worked with don't bring themselves into it. And they deserve a lot of credit, not just for the art, but also you know, story-wise as well, because there's a lot that they bring into the table that um, weren't necessarily in the script you know, from, from the beginning. So it's important that people know that, you know, artists aren't just uh, work for hire, where it's like, oh, we're just here to do a job. They bring a lot to the table that you don't necessarily get to see when the final work is done. Um, but that's why opportunities like this are important for us to shine a light and celebrate them in a way that they can be appreciated more. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And then I'm going to let um, Morby and Tsukami go because it's their evening time and Roy and I are going to keep talking. But first, I have one more question for you guys both. Um, what do you hope people gain from your work? So since we're your partner with Dark Horse now, our dream is that, of, you know, you're going to catch a whole new audience and a lot more people are going to see um, what the beautiful worlds that you guys have made. But what do you hope people gain the most from what they see in your work? Um, Tough who's question. Going first? <laughs> uh, for me i would um i would i would want people to um to get proper representation to understand proper representation of the african culture african characters african history uh we know we have i mean we have black characters in marvel dc dark Horse, we have black characters and all but um story-wise character-wise uh, personally i feel they're not quite African mm -hmm. enough, you know, yeah. delivery. So, and that's something that I want people to be able to, to see in my work and also my storytelling. You know, I, I said I started with a cartoonist and what it made me do was it made me draw without um, adding any text for them to speak. So he said, if people can't understand what you draw mm. without the text, wow. they are not doing it right. So that's the first thing I had to learn. So that's something I want people to be able to see my work and not have to like have read calculus before they get what's going on <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's for me yeah uh so for me um remember i said um that one of the things that fascinated me about or that fascinates me about the medium comic books is that we get to capture what we see on animation and film you know in a static form on pages so when I'm working on the pages, what, what I'm trying to go for is that, um, you know, just capturing mood, right? Capturing the emotions for each, um, each page, okay? So, and I think it's something, it's, it's uh, you know, it's more of um, something that, you know, I lean more heavily on the technique side of things. So I think it's something I would like to reemphasize for um, upcoming colorists is that um, we should treat each page or each panel as a painting. And you know we should give, make each of those panels rich enough. So that's what something that's something I would want um, people to see when they look at um, pages colored by me is that um, you know there are moods that you can literally see. You know because I admire that a lot in some you know senior colleagues in the industry. So that's something I, I really hope to achieve with each page. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, uh, your guys' work is truly stunning, and um, I'm really, really much. excited for people to, to see more of it. It's been an absolute delight every time I see more of your stuff coming through through my desk to um, explore more. Um, so I'm super stoked for people to see a lot more of it um, as we keep going forward. 
Um, but now I'm going to let you guys uh, be free and enjoy your evenings. Um, Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. All Have right. a good thanks one. A and thanks for, thanks for chatting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Perfect. So, Roy, it is, it's just the two of us now. Um, and we're yes, going to talk is. a little bit more in depth about kind of the world that you have, you've been building sort of more on a, not logistic scale, but like right. on, a, on a grander scale, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, so I, uh, you are a, truly a, a delight to work with. Like uh, you are so organized, and you have <laughs> an entrepreneur spirit. Like so few creators that I really know. Obviously, I love all, all my creators, but you yeah. you get me everything exactly on time. You are so organized and prepared for for all of it. How did? Yeah. I mean, how did that begin for you? When did when did the unique universe become your your job, your your gig, your passion? I mean, to me, it's something that um, I've always prided myself on. Is when I started this, I never really just looked at it as oh, I'm just self publishing. I looked at I've always looked at Unique Studios as a mega corporation, um, yeah. and not from a prideful standpoint or you know being boastful, but the mindsets. Of, of, of having a company that, okay, even though it was just me, I want to treat it as, you know, I had $10 million in the bank and, you know, I was responsible for that. And, and I, I had to treat, you know, employees at that time, obviously myself, you know, the right way. And I had to, you know, do things in the right way for me. So for me, the, my first thing, the first thing that I did when I knew I wanted to, okay, have a publishing company was I wanted to learn business. Like, yeah whether or not, okay, I'm going to be a publisher, or I'm, I'm, you know, going to be a mechanic, whatever the case may be, there are certain fundamentals of business that you have to have for, you know, each, whatever it is that you're doing. And those fundamentals are marketing, you know, PR, accounting, um, you know, public relations, you know, how to interact with your peers, how to interact with um, people that you, you work with, um, how to be prepared, budgeting, uh, you know, understanding finance. Like, so these are things that I bought a lot of books on, I read about, and I wanted to make sure that I had the foundation of being a business owner. Like, you know, I, I incorporated uh, my company, you know, um, every time I, I, I wrote a book, I made sure it was copywritten. Every time that I created a character, I make sure I, you know, trademarked the name. I think like, so I've always looked at things from a very, very, um, you know, I hate to use the word like corporation type of, of, of mindset, yeah, but yeah. I feel like I feel like if you if you if you give the respect to your material, uh, because obviously the flash and, and or, you know, great stories and, 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 you know, great art, like those are great things. And that's what people see first. But there's a bunch of things that go behind that that actually propel people to success. And um, I, I knew it was going to come in handy when I finally got a break. Um, especially now, you know, talking about Dark Horse and I'm, be, I'm able to put that to work. So when you talk to me about PR or marketing, you don't have to explain anything to me because I know exactly yeah. what I need to do. Um, when you guys talk to me about submitting things on time or looking into this or interviews or, or conventions, I know exactly what to do. So I, I want to use that as an opportunity to tell people out there that you, you, you can't ignore the fundamentals. And that's really what separates people successful people in this industry is people who have mastered the fundamentals and, and not just look at, oh, the, the creative side of things. Yeah. And I think, I think one of the key things of what you just said there is like, um, it's not necessarily just for you. Like you, you know, yeah. you started and you were your own employee, but like yeah. also you're bringing in a lot of creators from yes. Africa who, well, yes. I mean, obviously their voices are necessary and important, but like yeah. without your, your kind of guidance through yeah. that, like in such a professional way, it would be yeah. a lot harder for us to get those voices. Yeah. How important was was that like absolutely like the first thing that kind of came to be is you knew you wanted African voices to be telling these stories or did that kind of come along with the process? No, from day one, that's what I wanted to do. And, and I always, um, I, you know, I try to preface those comments. You know, I, do, I don't say that because I don't, I don't work with people that are not African or African, yeah. you know, American. Like I, I want to make sure that people understand, um, you know, a lot of people on the continent where I was born and raised don't get these type of opportunities. And um, I don't, I don't want to look at someone like, you know, oh, like I'm, I'm the one that's, you know, providing all the job. No, that's not what, that's not what it is. If I have an opportunity um, to provide a platform for African artists to expose their art, 
I mean, you know, that's, that's, I want to take that opportunity first. Um, there's tons of stuff I do with, with other people, but my priority okay. is exposing people on the continent to a mainstream audience as it, as it, as it, as it pertains to, um, you know, whether it's comic books and hopefully in the future animation, TV and, and, and film, like it, it's part of the mission of the company is to empower African creatives and storytelling. So it's not just the storytelling part of things. It's like, you know, the creative people as well. Um, I feel like they just do so much great work and, and their, their work needs to be seen more in mainstream yeah. media. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm 100% with you. And I think that, I mean, when when this product or when this line kind of came through to me, that was one of the things that I was most excited about was just the fact that, I mean, Dark Horse has published Black Voices before and we've, yeah. uh, we work with like Nettie Akorafor who publishes yeah. you know, African stories. Yeah. But there's such a there's such a hole there in our industry that really um, is, is filled by things like Unique and... Yeah. Uh, Obviously, unique is uh, unique to itself. In that. But um, I, I think yeah. that uh, I think it's something that's growing. But I yeah. think it's people, you know, like you who are like organized on top of it, like have their own companies and stuff uh, who really bring that to light and are really, really cool. And um, yeah. Fun. And again, I also want to give kudos to to you guys at, at Dark Horse. Um, you know, yeah. I know people may see it as, as bias, but um, it, it takes it takes, you know, people to you know people that are actively looking for things like this and believe in this type of material um to be able to say hey you know this is great work and it's not a thing where it's like oh we just want to feel a quota you guys actually respect the work and you guys have shown that to me so i, I want to make sure i say it in a public forum mm -hmm. you know that um you know this is something where you know you know dark horse made the effort to actually say we want to be part of the people that you know um you know give more opportunities to stories like this and and creators like myself um you know as well i know now you know you know with everything that happened last year it's it's a sexy thing to be able to say okay diverse you know creators and you know we're, we're empowering that you know but, but our talks within you know, my talks with dark horse started before all that uh, so i want to make sure that i put that out there um you know to be able to say that you know you know you guys saw um, you know, something in, in, in not just me, but, you know, you know, the entire world. And um, you guys took, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a, a long back and forth and struggle like, oh, should we, you guys saw it, recognized it. And kudos to you guys for, for uh, taking that chance. And, and, and I know that this is something that's going to be extremely great for, for all parties involved. And even I think the consumer is going to be the, the best benefit of, of this. Absolutely. As well too. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I mean, the, yeah, the, your Kickstarters have been truly like huge, and uh, I mean, you Yanu made thousands of dollars. Like it was well backed. Yeah. Um, so I think Dark Horse saw not necessarily just like uh, the voices. You know, we need them, but it's yeah. also like there's there's good business yeah, here. These exactly. are voices that there's a hole in our um, in our industry that yeah. you know we. Uh, I think people are starting to see a lot more, and I, yeah. I'm grateful that you know we are able to to swoop in and get unique before anyone else got you. Uh, I think right. uh, any, any company would be lucky to work with you guys. Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. As far as I, I mentioned the Kickstarter, I guess yeah. that's something where I, it's an interesting place where people have started to kind of develop more and more. Um, mm -hmm. How did, but I mean, obviously Kickstarter has been around for such a long time, but yeah. even then like you, you started kind of, as Kickstarter was sort of gaining steam, do you have any advice for people who are looking at Kickstarter now that it's kind of, it's grown so much? Yeah, um, one thing that I always try to tell people about, about Kickstarter, and I'm very fortunate, I'm grateful for a platform like Kickstarter because I think um, a lot of what has happened in, in my career, um, you know, has a lot to do with having a platform where I can just go out and say, this is a story I'm trying to tell and people can, you know, quote unquote back. Um, you know, that, um, you know, potential. So Kickstarter has been great for so many creators, but if I were to tell people now, because obviously a lot of people are on Kickstarter, one, one mis misconception that people have is that, you know, that's where you get your audience. Uh, Kickstarter is a place now where you bring an audience and then your audience makes a lot of noise for you. And then a new audience sees the noise that people are making and they join uh, that audience, you know? So, so what am I talking about? Because that's, that's a lot of uh, the, the use of the word audience, but in, look at it this way. You have two identical projects that look great on Kickstarter. Um, they both launched on the same day. And I, as, as someone who's just browsing Kickstarter, trying to buy a book, um, I see, okay, project A, 
you know, looks exactly as Project B. They're both interesting, but one of them has 50% funded in two hours and the other one has, you know, 10% funded in, in, in two days. They look at identical, but as a human being, my brain is gonna to gravitate towards the one that, what, how is this funded, you know, halfway already in two hours? Like at that point in time, it becomes less about the quality. And don't get me wrong, quality matters. Yeah. But, you know, as human beings, we want to be part of success, right? So people look at that 50% and they're like, wow, I want to be part of this. Why is this, why are people here? So they go on that, they fall in love with the story and they become, you know, part of your audience, you know? So, but that's what you, the audience from outside does for you is that you can bring your audience, you can get, gravitate them, have them get you as close as possible to the finishing line. And that just starts the momentum, you know, for you. So if I had one thing to say, it would be, get your audience outside first, whether that's through social media, you know, you build a newsletter or you're giving out free copies of, of your, uh, free copies of your book online, um, you know, to build your fan base and then do that for a couple of months, then launch a Kickstarter, then use those people to, um, you know, build momentum and you should have a better chance of being successful um, as well. Yeah. Um, and then, so speaking of Kickstarter, so you started on Kickstarter, join dark horse but in the process you've also got something else in the works yanu correct me if i'm wrong i'm a little less clear on kind of the direct line as far as yeah. film tv goes yeah. so you have a producer correct in an animation studio yes yes we do there's a lot that i can't say now i know yeah but, everything yeah is but, no 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 but, but <laughs> what i what, what i can say is that you know we've made huge strides um, with Ianu. Uh, and again, Ianu is such an amazing project. It's, um, it's one that, um, you know, honestly, I saw a lot of potential in it when I was writing the character. I spent a lot of time. Ianu is literally like a mini universe within the unique universe. I spent almost three years, you know, just doing world building um, wow. on that, um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a massive project. But it's also something that, um, you know, I believe very unique, like, you know, when you look at you know, main characters being a teenage female African girl, um, you know, as a lead character, you don't get to see that every day. Um, so a lot of people gravitate towards that because it's just something new and compelling and it looks magical and, you know, the story is brilliant, you know, but, um, you know, I, I, I say all that to, to say that a lot of people outside the comic book industry immediately also see that as, as potential. So we've been able to have so many people um, you know, approach us, um, you know, right now, you know, we, we're partnered with some, you know, studios and some producers. Again, I can't say too much about <laughs> yep. it, but I, what I can say is that we're well on our way to getting um, to a point where this becomes hopefully an animated, um, you know, series, you know, as well. And a lot of stuff will be coming out in, in the future um, about that. So fingers crossed, everybody that's a fan of yeah. Studios and Iyanu that um, it, it gets over that uh, proverbial hump because animation, like I said, at yeah. the beginning of this, of this is, is very hard, um, even when you have great stuff. Yeah, no, that is that is true. And there's always a point where everything is secret, but really, really exciting. <laughs> yeah. and, um, it's all yeah. of a sudden it's going to be like a switch when you can talk about it. And then it's just going to the ball's going to keep going yeah. from there. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, if you're watching this, follow Unique Studios on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, follow Dark Horse, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We'll keep you up to date with all announcements that come forward from this. Um, and then we're getting close to closing out here. Um, but I guess for people who have, so, uh, unique started because it was a great idea. There was a hole in the market. What mm -hmm. do you, what's your number one piece of advice for people who have great ideas like unique? Um, man, one is, is very hard, but uh, again, honestly, it may you can sound, have more than one. <laughs> I think for me, you know, it may sound like, you know, I, I'm just trying to be, you know, I think humility is the first thing. Yeah. Um, that you have to have um, because this industry, first of all, is very close knit. Um, you know, a lot of people know a lot of people. Um, and I just, you know, for me, I think that's something that has served me very well is just, again, knowing that I don't know everything and then also being very respectful to everybody that I come in contact with, whether or not I work with them or I don't, or they become a fan or they don't, or they become a customer or they don't. Um, I think just the humility of again, knowing that you don't know everything, um, that's gonna allow you to try to educate yourself as much as possible and just treating people with common decency 
and you know being a, a, a good person um, you know to people I, I think goes a very very long way um, you know so I would say humility in attitude but when it comes down to actual maybe what you know technique or you know business savvy I would say um, you have to start with a very very good idea and you have to you know be able to look at it from the standpoint of okay I have a good idea but I need a good foundation around this good idea to be able to make it successful and that's what you know in the beginning that's why I, I brought into okay what do you know about you know starting you know starting to be in a business or a sole proprietor you know you know how do you raise money for this thing are you going to use kickstarter how does kickstarter work what are some successful projects that i can mimic what are some unsuccessful projects that i can look in and stay away from things that they did because uh, I, I think you learn more from failure than success honestly you know i, I mean I, you know i have to be honest like even for me one thing that i try to do more often now is um as much as i celebrate successes i try to tell people things that went wrong um on the way to those successes because i, I want people to not necessarily make the same mistakes I make, but also learn from the mistakes that I made as well. So, so I think educating yourself about the business of comics is something that's very crucial. And you juxtapose that with humility. And I think you're off to a great start. Great. I think that is some perfect advice. This industry is it's small, it's changing yeah. all the time. Um, yeah. And so it's just, yeah, being aware that not everything is going to go perfectly yeah. um the first time yes. around the second time around the fifth time the, around the hundredth um, time around <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah um but uh i think that's i think that's perfect advice so um like i said earlier uh for those of you watching um thank you for joining us on this conversation um follow unique studios is it just at unique studios on everything yes yes at unique studios y-o-u-n-w-e-k and then the word studios twitter facebook um, you know, uh, Instagram, you know, Snapchat, yeah. although I don't know the last time I was on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And then you can also find all our updates on, you know, the Dark Horse side of things at Dark Horse Comics. Uh, I think pretty much everywhere you can, you'll, you'll find us. Um, if you just type in Dark Horse, you will just find Katy Perry, but add the comments <laughs> and you'll get there. Um, <laughs> uh, Roy, it is always a pleasure talking to you. Um, and uh, people are going to see a lot more of you in the future, both from Dark Horse and it far, far beyond us as well. So no, for thank you so much. And uh, again, you know, I appreciate this opportunity, um, you know, to be able to, to broaden the audience for, for this material. Um, I love all you guys at Dark Horse, uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I'm really excited about this program and, and what it's going to do for the industry. Great. Awesome.